Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Saved by Grace. We're at season four, episode nine, and and wow, what a what a treat you know we have for you guys. Um, I'm really proud uh, to being able to see the journey of these two men that that will get an opportunity to share what God has done in their lives. Let me tell you the battles that they that they wage, what God has done in their lives. I'm 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 proud to to call them, you know, brothers in Christ. Um, I know many people who don't talk about addiction, who don't talk about you know, the battle that we wage, but man, these guys are opening up their hearts and their lives. And I just thank God for, for their willingness. You know, we're going to talk about a, a tough subject, but I know I'm so proud of the, the journey that they've carried and that's why we want to bring it to light. So, you know, I'm talking about my, my co-host also, you know, uh, Alex, um, and in Julio, you know, one of my, my disciples, Julio, who uh, both have waged the, the same war differently, you know? And so, um, it, we want to, want to be transparent to the glory of God and also welcome, man. Uh, it's been a, it's been a long time wanting to share this, but I believe God allowed this moment to glorify him. Absolutely. I think we tried to do this on season one, but it just didn't work out, but no, it's all God's timing. You know, a lot happens to season one and, but no, I, I'm finally in a good place. You know, I can finally say I'm a true disciple of Christ and, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say it feels good to say, hey, I'm walking in freedom. You know, it feels good to say, hey, I conquered all my struggles. But no, thank you for asking me to do this. And I'm willing and I'm excited to be sharing. Awesome. Can't wait to hear, you know, what God has done in your life and for you to share with everybody who's going through the same struggle. Julio, man, I've been uh, walking with you and we've been walking with God for a while. And, and you went through similar similar battle. You know, uh, God has done something amazing recently in your life in this area. So you know, welcome. Thanks for your willingness to share that with, with people. Awesome. Awesome. So we know what, for those people that don't know, you know, also people may, may see him at the front worshiping, loving God, giving it all, but they don't know this part about you. What can you tell us about this uh, subject of your life before, before Christ? Yeah, before Christ. So it'll be two years in November since I gave my life to Christ. Um, it's, it hasn't been easy for sure, but you know who I used to be, um, I was, addicted, I was addicted to uh, marijuana, um, alcohol, cocaine, shrooms, you know, anything you can name, uh, prostitutes, lust. Um, I was just a broken man trying to seek things outside of God's will. And I just kept finding myself repeating the same cycles and trying to be sober on my own. And I never realized until God called me to come to him that, hey, he was the answer. And Jesus was the answer the whole time. And, you know, like, yeah, that's who I used to be. Um, you know, and, and we'll, we'll go through a journey together, you know, can you walk us through that journey of when like, man, you were addicted to all these things, you know, and, and did you realize, you know, how, where you were when you were doing all these things? <laughs> it's funny. Cause I remember like my, cause my mother and my sister would see it firsthand, you know, I would get drunk and get high. And I remember my mom always telling me, I'm like, you're an alcoholic you're like you're a druggie you know like and i remember just snapping at my mom you know i remember just using vulgar language and i'm like you don't know my life you don't know what i'm going through uh, but I, I knew what i was going to like what i was doing but when i was high and drunk like i didn't care because that was like my alter ego um but no like it's definitely been a process you know i was a broken man um i battled with depression anxiety um i just i was trying to i was literally trying to, i was literally getting drunk and high every day just so I can make it to the next day. I thought just getting high, drunk would make the day go by quicker. And that was my excuse to getting drunk and high. But also too, it gave me courage, you know, gave me, you know, I've never really had anybody show me at that time. I didn't have anybody like show me love. And, you know, I, every relationship I was into, I always got hurt or I was the one doing the hurting. And, you know, when I got drunk and high, I would seek prostitutes. You know, I would start like finding different relationships I could get into because I was looking for that love i was looking for that acceptance but all it did was just bound me and chain me up and at that time i didn't see it but i every day i was getting high and drunk and finding these women i was allowing the enemy to chain me up wow um did, did you realize that how bound you were i mean i know looking at looking back at it now you know you, we realized it was an attack from the enemy but when you're in that moment you know you're drunk i don't know what was the gateway what opened those doors at the beginning and then that led pretty much to all these other drugs that you were doing yeah so at that time no of course i didn't know i was being bounded you know i just thought it was normal because you know a lot of society now thinks getting high and drunk it's normal 
But in reality, if you're if you're struggling in life right now, and if you're like going through some trauma and stuff, like I'm telling you right now, alcohol, drugs, re- these relationships is not the answer. All you're doing is just fueling the attack from the enemy. You know, and a lot of people might not understand that. But the more you do these things, you're literally putting yourself in a deeper hole, and and the chains getting tighter. But for me, like, man. What was so when I would get drunk, I would just like, okay, I'm drunk. I'm feeling this sign away. I'm getting bored. Let me get high now. So now I was drunk and high. So when I got high, I'm like, okay, I'm bored. I want some energy. I will go to cocaine and get me. And and, and when I was high off cocaine and alcohol, to me, like I, I felt like I was sober. But like when you would see my actions, like always trying to fight everybody or trying to curse everybody out, like dude, like I didn't know who I was. I, I lost myself. So when I would like. Tr- to bring myself down, I wouldn't sober myself up. I would just take shrooms just to calm me down. And once I was okay at that state, I had different levels of like intoxications. So when I when I got to that level, I'm like, okay, I, w- I want to go seek after, a, I want to lust after a woman. So I'll start sending messages, start scrolling through Instagram. Who can I hit up? Like old people from my past. I would just like, okay, let's do this and that. And then what did I get out of it? Nothing, because I was just back doing the same thing tomorrow so i never really allowed myself to heal on that aspect yeah yeah you know and and it's it's interesting here you mentioned that and you're able to see that now you know and and this the enemy uses this strategy with with men all across you know and you know i want to we want to hear what god did and what finally allow you to come back to god you know i want to ask uh also in the same way julio you know like you face the same battle in a different front you know and but the enemy was using the same strategy, addiction, drugs. Can you tell us a little bit about about um, how that was, you know, before you came to Christ? Yeah, well, before I came to Christ, um, I, I was an alcoholic. Um, I smoked a lot of cigarettes, too, when I was drinking. And before that, I used to smoke a lot of methamphetamine, sniff it, smoke it, and I was addicted to meth. And um, throughout my – but that was back when I was, like uh, – 17 years old was the last time that I that I used meth and it was but it, I I stopped using it as, after a prayer though it, it it's crazy because I I would smoke it a lot and with my friends and ever since that day I just took the step of faith even though I didn't know Christ to I needed something I I knew like I I seen my friends talking to themselves I seen them walking down the block at three in the morning uh, on a Cova sex street back and forth in circles. And I was like, I don't want to end up like that. And I just prayed one day and I never did it again. You know, in, in that moment when you were, you were drinking, you were doing what you were doing, did, I, I, did you realize that it, where you were like, like, just like also share with us, like one thing led to another that eventually led to all the things that it, that he did. But, um, did you realize it before you, you finally prayed or, um, well, during, when I was drinking, no, I didn't realize it. My, I started drinking when I was 14 and my mom would tell me I got to an age where she was like, Hey, like you need to stop drinking. You're 21. You've been drinking for five years now. Like you don't want to be 30. You don't want to get to the age of 30. You're just, it's going to be worse. You're killing your liver, you know? And I didn't realize how bad it was until I got to the age of 28, 27. I was like, okay, I think I need to stop, but I couldn't stop. I was an alcoholic. I would drink every single day, 6 a.m. I was at the liquor store, you know, and I didn't see how bad it was until um, it started, like, little by little. My wife wanted to stay away from me. I saw how much my kids were hurting, and one day Sabrina said, enough is enough, and she uh, she changed the number. Um, I didn't see my kids. I was at my homie's pad for like four or five days straight with no shower. I just, I was drinking every day, same clothes. And I couldn't drive because I was too drunk. So how was I going to go home and change? Because I, I I would choose to just drink, drink, and drink. And I would go days without eating, but I would have money for my beer. And that day, like, there's more detail. There's like anxiety, depression, depression, me wanting to kill myself. Um, Just a lot of thought of me having nothing, you know, like. I didn't really have money. I had work, but it was calling off. And I was just at a point where it's like, dang, like, if I continue this, I'm going to die. Not only that, I'm going to lose my family over a drink. And I just, I couldn't control it. But that day was just, I, I saw how low I was. So that's when 
I, I decided to seek for help. Like it was the very first time that I ha actually called someone. That's when I called Oscar, like I shared last time, you know, where he prayed for me and, and I really felt God's presence. But, you know, before we get into that, Julio, um, you know, I, I, the there's a day pastor always says that there's a day when all of us will get on our knees and 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 seek for God, you know, and and for both of you. It, you know, you see the pattern of the enemy, you know, there was pattern of addiction, there's pattern of depression, there's pattern of suicidal thoughts, there's, there, there's uh, anxiety that that these addiction brings, you know, I, I hope you guys see the pattern. That's why I think it's so it's just God ordained that the sign this, this, um, this conversation, take us to uh, we'll start with you also take us to the day, the day that changed your day around your, your life around, you know, the the day that you finally said I had it and you realize I need to come to my senses, just like the Bible tells us I, after all the things that you did t t walk us through that day. Yeah. Yeah. So the day was actually November 10th, 2021. Um, but before, you know, everything led up to that. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Claudio, you know, um, we were actually talking about, about it, this camping that he didn't give up for a year and a half on me to bring me to Christ for a whole year and a half. He uh, kept trying to bring me to Christ. And I remember I would always get angry when he would try to bring up church. And I'm like, bro, like, I'm good. I got me. You know, I don't need God. Like, stop trying to ask you. But, you know, Claudia, from the bottom of my heart, I love you, bro. Like, now that we see where I'm at now, like, we're part of Georgia's 12 together. And we're doing ministry together. And, I, and, like, it's beautiful to see. And I'm like, you know, praise God. And thank you for not giving up on me. But, you know, the, the day was November 10th, 2021. You know, I had, um, I had just gone 300 days clean um and my i don't know why but i went to vegas right and i knew like the only reason why i went to vegas was because of uh, my uncle's bachelor party and you know thinking i'm like that's my uncle i gotta go for his bachelor party because i was part of his groomsman but i already knew that like, if i was gonna go to vegas i'm gonna relapse i'm gonna relapse and do it so the first night i went i got to vegas like I was cool. I didn't do anything, so I was kind of happy. I was proud, like, okay, cool, I might do this. But the second night came, man, that enemy whispered in my ear like crazy. And that was a, uh, I relapsed, you know? So um, that happened in October. So November November 10th came, man. I remember I was spiraling out again that day. I remember I had woken up, woken up at 7 in the morning, got to the liquor store about like 6.40s. All, all by 8 o'clock, I had drank 6.40s in the morning. And then I went back and got I got a whiskey bottle. I drank that. I got a, a almost an ounce of weed the whole day I got loaded and I remember just I, I knocked out and I remember just waking up and I felt like a piece of trash you know I felt like dang like I let my mom down again like I'm like dang I'm yeah, I'm never gonna change I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be free from this addiction so you know um I had I'm like I'm gonna kill myself I'm gonna kill myself today like and then right right as soon as I spoke that I heard a dark voice tell me hey slit your throat ear to ear and this is why god's so real to me because of this experience so i happened to have a box cutter right there in my drawer and i was about to slit my tank i was very close and that's when i heard god's voice hey okay it's time come home so i dropped it and i called claudio right away i just started praying i called claudio and i always say this because he didn't answer me the first time <laughs> you know he didn't answer me the first time but um he called me back and i told him hey bro like I just, I was weeping, man, and I told him, like, thank you for not giving up on me. Like, hey, when cell group, this was on a Monday. I remember it was on a Monday, and he's like, hey, well, Thursday, come to cell group, and we'll go, and yeah, that's how I gave my life to Christ radically, because he literally saved me from slitting in my throat, and I knew I was going to go through it, because I'm like, I wasn't going to allow myself to keep hurting my mom, and even though it was selfish of me thinking I was going to kill myself, like, I already knew, like, I'm not going to change, but the fact that Jesus pulled me out, like, that's why I'm like, I'm going to give everything to Jesus because he saved me. Wow. Glory to God, man. Glory to God. Because, uh, you know, the your testimony in the hands of God it, it will bring so many people to, to his feet, you know. And you remember those days because they're real, you know. Like, you know, if you think back, what would have happened if, if that voice would have been louder, you know. You know, and thank God you, you, you listened to the word of God, you know, to the voice of God. Thank God for Claudio, for men like, like Claudio that that pray that that don't give up. You know, um, I do remember the day that this guy called me. <laughs> you know, we remember key moments in our life. You know, and and um, um, the day that you that Julio called me, like, 
I remember because it was the day after my birthday, you know, and 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 he calls me and 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 he called me right at that moment when you said you were you were at your boy's house, you know, and and um and and yeah, you know, like I remember, like it was yesterday, you know, I knew that God had a calling for your life, but you know, um, God allowed us an opportunity to share the, that experience, you know. So, what can you tell us about that moment and? just like also had been sober for over what 300 days like and the moments that led after that because I, I i remember after the day after those times you stopped drinking but then you know like what happened on that journey to being sober you know yeah so um after that day like i after god answered that prayer that i prayed <clears throat> for those who don't know i prayed a prayer that for him to shed his light and and bring peace into my life because I really, like, I didn't know what to do. I was in darkness. I felt like I was in a hole, and I really wanted to kill myself. I really wanted to die. And when he called, when I we spoke, I called him, and we spoke, and he prayed. He prayed the very exact thing for God to shed his light, to put peace, in, peace inside of me and take out the darkness. And that was, like, the very exact, that's all I needed. So after that, it just, like, I knew God was with me, you know, I've, even after everything i had done so to me i was like dang even after after everything i've done and there's so many details that i can't share right now that maybe in the future i can share that would you know help people understand more but um after all of that like god was there you know like it's just like he i called on to me it's like okay come here you know like it doesn't take much for god to want to help you all you have to do is ask and and for uh that day um we we hung up and it just after that prayer it it just lifted me up and um after that I that's when I, I started to sober up. Um I went like maybe three weeks sober, drank again, then like another month, drank again. That was because we spoke on August, then I drank again November, then again on February. I think he yelled at me. <laughs> I think it was that day. Yeah, yeah, he yelled at me and out of love though, you know what I mean? It's out of love. He cares, you know, and he yelled at me in a good way. And um, but after that, I I never drink again. I I stopped drinking because I knew the I knew what was going on. I knew that I had to stop. I knew God was pulling me out, and for me to like, I had to try. And it was a process, you know. I was growing because I used to drink every single day. So to go from a drinking every day to going sober for three weeks, drinking, then going sober for two months, like that was already progress, you know. That's already God working and. And it just it, it just I just had the strength that I didn't have before, and and I continued on with it. Yeah, you know, if, maybe if this is not an appropriate thing to to say, you know, uh, um, maybe we could edit this. But I remember that when you called me, you know, um, you had gone to our cell group years ago. I have pictures of you when, you know, you, you could tell you were drinking because your your face was like like super swollen. Now that I look back, now that I look back to it, I was thinking, man, how, why was I so blind that I didn't see that this guy needed, you know, a word of encouragement, you know, and, and I looked at a picture recently and you were super swollen, bro. And I was thinking, man, like, and I remember when you left, you know, when you left our cell group and I, and I remember I told Karen, man, I wish I would have done more for that guy. You know, I remember I would see Sabrina, you know, uh, coming to church by herself, you know, and I would see this woman like pray your kids and it would hurt, you know, it would hurt to see her with your brand new baby just coming in, loving God, praying for you. I knew she was praying for you. I know because she would tell my wife. And man, I thought all these times, all this time, I thought, man, I wish I would have done something else. I wish I would have prayed for him. I wish that time that I took him to to um, to I took you to to your house. I don't remember where I took you. And we're just talking about nonsense. It, it, it were just I didn't get a chance to tell you to wake up you know I didn't get a chance to tell you like snap out of it and um because you were gonna lose your family bro you know the enemy was coming after your kids after Evan you know after your your I mean I'm gonna ask, maybe you could erase that names you know but you're coming after your family you know after and that hurt I took it personal so when you called me I gave it everything I remember that I wasn't gonna let you hang up without me without asking God to really pray. So I was waiting for three, four months for that day to pray for you. And when you called me, man, it was it was crazy. And so and I, I I thank God that you shared the process because just because somebody prays for you, like also also's journey is a little different because he almost lost his life, you know? And I you know, I believe that 
also like like Luke, like um the book of Luke tell, tells us about the apostle Paul, you know, like he, there was a before and after. I mean, not Luke, the book of Acts, you know, chapter nine tells us when he fell, like it was like before and after. You didn't fall back to addiction, but this guy did, you know, and. And I love the, your progress because in that progress, God show you mercy, God show you love. He built you, and and man, what a beautiful journey has been, you know. I know since that moment came, I don't know if you had an, a desire to go back to the filth. I know, I don't know if you have. I don't know if you could share with us. Like, has it been easy? Because like you, Julio, say, there's been temptation along the road, you know. Uh, we'll start with also, how, have you had the desire to go back, you know, because many people say like it is. Sometimes we do, you know, I think a couple months after my encounter, I, I did. Um, I'm like, I don't know if church is for me, you know, like I was I was missing the world. I was missing my freedom. I'm not going to say like I'm not like, like I missed my freedom when I thought was freedom. You know, I I wanted to like, dang, I just want to have one beer or oh, man, like. Why do I need to stop having like fornication? You know, like I did, I, I had temptation, but I knew my purpose. I knew that God, like, hey, I called you to change your generations. And like every time I have temptations now, I'm like, if I fall, my generations are going to fall. And it took hundreds of years for, for my family's generation to be broken because they had to wait until it got to me to be broken. Like I'm not, I, I'm not about to be the one that's going to put my generation back into the hands of the enemy. You know, so for like, there's going to be temptations. We all know that, you know, that's, that's how the enemy attacks, right? It's through temptations, you know, some fall, some don't, but even the ones that fall, it's like, Hey, be grateful that God still has grace over your life, you know? And it's for me, I just, I have too much to lose now. You know, uh, my family's counting on me, even the people that want me to fail, you know, because when I was coming to Christ, a lot of people were like, Hey, you're going through a process or Hey, like a lot of my family don't talk to me because of like, they think I'm better than them, you know? So there's, my family's counting on me, my future wife, my kids, or my son's counting on me. And for me, like, I fight every day and I deny my cross and carry my cross daily because, like, my generations are relying on me to take them to the promised land that God promised me. Um, no, yeah, just first of all, um, I wanted to say that um, at that time, you you did do enough. You did a lot. I was just, honestly, I was a knucklehead, you know? And, but um, sometimes it, it got to allow somebody to fall that deep for them to, you know, realize and get back up. But um, <clears throat> with me, no, honestly, like after encounter, even before encounter, like I was, I, I was done drinking. Um, I the, I remember that last time that I drank on March first, probably, and I remember that time that I drank and I was had so much anxiety and so much uh, depression, and I I just felt like I was gonna die. Like I felt like the enemy was just grabbing me by the neck. Like I I can't explain it, but it just felt horrible. And I was like, why do I keep doing this to myself? Why? And after that, I just I quit. You know, I just I I stopped. Um, and through even after encounter, I never craved it again. I never craved it again. I was I was fine without it. I didn't miss it. I did have other struggles that I overcame now. Um, but I never felt that temptation to want it anymore because I knew how how bad it destroyed my family. You know, I I wanted to die. My kids were, you know, there uh, came a time where Sabrina was just keeping them away from me, and you know, it was like she was done, and I was losing everything. But um, after a year and four months, which was two weeks ago, I I had a fall. Um, not because I was craving alcohol, but I had this uh, situation that happened at work and I thought I was going to lose my job. Um, I couldn't go back to work because of a certain situation with my license because I'm a truck driver. Right. And they didn't want to allow me to renew it at the DMV. Um, they said I couldn't renew it. And I called my job and they're like, hey, like, um, it, well, you can't come back to work unless you renew it. And I was like, what am I going to do? I have to pay rent, my kids and this and that. And I just felt like. I felt like, how is God going to make a way for me? And I got so frustrated that I didn't want to drink, but I wanted to forget that moment. Like, I just didn't want to think about it. And I think that was one of my biggest tests because I haven't, like, I was, I haven't felt the need, okay, I need to, I want to forget about this. Like, 
I usually just I I go to God, let him, you know, do his thing, whether fresh red or not. But I don't go to alcohol. And this time I went to a, uh, I was outside Uruapan, and I just I sat there for like an hour. I'm like, should I? Should I not? Should I? And I was like, you know what? A thought came to my head of someone telling me, you could have one. Like you're not gonna relapse. You could have one. And I was like, that's true. I'm frustrated. Like, you know what? I'm just gonna relax. Like, why? Like. It's fine. And I, I walked inside. I had one. And after that, I had three. After that, I had 10. After that, I had, I, I probably drank like a 20 pack to myself. And I, I woke up in the morning and that those thoughts of, but it is crazy because it wasn't only the anxiety and the depression, but everything from my past was like sitting with me. Like I can't explain it, but everything that I had let go of, uh, things that I had uh, got over, things that I wasn't struggling with anymore, that feeling was there. And it was over me getting drunk. And to me, that's the perfect example of going back to your vomit because it's like that Bible verse says, um, uh, to not go back to your sin like a dog goes back to his vomit, you know? Not in those words, but you guys get me. And um, um, it was that's a perfect example because i wasn't struggling with it struggling with it is like all right oscar like i need to i need to pray for me i I drink on friday then on sunday oh damn i drink again it's like nah like i don't struggle with it i don't drink so that's a perfect example of you choosing to go to the vomit and you know and taking it and 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 that's what i did but so that that day like i had all those feelings back and i told myself i was never gonna feel this way again because I was done with it. And I didn't even wake up hungover. It wasn't even that. It was just the emptiness that I felt. Like, I'm like, I let God down. I let my kids down. I let my wife down. Like, I'm like, I let everybody down on Instagram, you know? Like, because my, my homeboy posted me. He recorded me and he posted it. I was like, bro, did he really post this? But you know what? Like, it's okay, you know? Like, we're not perfect. A lot of people think, like, that as Christians, we're perfect and we're better than everybody else. Well, we don't sin. And it's like, no, we still have struggles. We still go through temptation. Like, we're not immune to this. You're not. Oscar isn't. Leaders from church are not immune to this. The, the only reason they stand firm and um in, in obedience is because they run to the Word of God. If we don't run to the Word of God like the, that day that I didn't, they're going to be in the same boat. You know what I mean? We need to run to God to to be able to to continue. We can't do anything without God. We can't, you know. And and that day just it w- it was awful. And and um, I remember waking up and I was like, and usually when I would wake up, I was ready for another beer. I'd be at at the store at six in the morning. Let's go. But that day I was like, dude, what did I do? I felt so foolish. And Oscar was blowing me up, and I was like, why is he texting me so much? But I, he 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 knew because well because Karen called me and she was like she was hey what are you doing I was like I'm on my way to church and she was like oh okay and like she knew I was drunk she knew I was drunk she can tell right so I guess that's how you found out right because I called him I called this guy and, and he fooled me did I was like nah bro because uh, uh, Sabrina told Karen, hey, you know, I think something's up. I've been checking the credit card statement, this and this and that. And so then, bam, got him, you know. So then uh, so then I was like, nah, baby. I was like, nah, baby. Like, I call, let me call him right now. And then so I, because I trusted him. I trusted my boy. I'm like, hey, you know, he's good, you know. And so I call him. I'm like, what's up, bro? Where you at? He's like, I'm on my way to church, bro. Where are you at? I'm like, yeah, bro, I'm on my way. And so I had him on speaker. And and I told Karen, there you go, man. Just tell Sabrina she needs to chill. I literally told her that. And, and then Karen's like, nah, nah. I know my girl. She's not playing. And so I'm like, okay, well, then you call him then. And so then she called this guy and, and she got him. And so then, but with me, like, the voice sounded, like, so, like, 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 like good. Like, he was good. And, you know, I knew at that moment when Karen called me, that's the deceiver, you know, the enemy, bro. Like, and he, he was like sober as like any other day on the phone when I heard him. And then when Karen called you, you're like, you start slipping, dude. Like, you were like, nah, yeah. You know? 
you know, and and it's crazy because he, he was texting me and text. I, well, I was replying for a bit, but then he he started calling me and I wasn't answering. Him, but but not because I didn't want to answer him, but I I I was just asking God for forgiveness for drinking again, and it was just that to me that was huge, you know, and um, so I um after that he kept calling me and I was just ignoring it and I I like just like the last time like I talked about it earlier when I was like God like take give me peace and take away my darkness right and then he prays for me says the same thing right so that day I, I tripped out because um I was like God like please help me out of this feeling I hate this feeling I don't want to be here I want to be right with you like you know I want to I want to have my peace like um help me i don't know how you can help me this time i don't know how you can get me back up this time but help me ding <laughs> homeboy's at the door you know and i was like who's knocking at 10 in the morning and i thought it i thought it was i that's oscar i thought it was the kids next door wanting to play with my son and i go i open it and i was like dude like i was shocked because again god help me and there he was at the door and i was like i was tripping i think it took me like 20 seconds to let you in i was like shocked bro and then he let him in and and we just started talking and I, dude like i started crying bro like I, honestly i'll be straight up i started crying because to me that's like that's god there again hearing me and you know like not giving up and i was like damn like and i i appreciate this man bro like who comes to your pad 30 minute drive and 10 in the morning he could be doing anything else bro and he comes to my house because i wasn't responding you know and he knew that I, you know that i i i needed him and you know i needed help and i needed prayer and, and i needed to hear a word from god most importantly you know and he knew my family needed uh needed something as well because it what what when i do things like that it affects my family you know and for him to, to pull up like that's the real one man like uh, lots of respect i love this dude bro for real like and yeah like that 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 happened to me i had a slip you know but i don't crave it i don't want it like and i feel like i got up stronger because i've had trials after that i had that same thing happen again where i couldn't go back to work because of something with my license again i was like i don't care god you know what like you're gonna come through somehow bam i end up going back to work yeah, I don't know why it is that, like, sometimes we, we got to fall in order to, you know, to get up stronger. You know, I, I, I don't know why it works that way, but I asked you, um, I think it was uh, that two weeks ago, right? I asked you, I was like, you're like, sometimes that's what helps us grow and God allows us to. And I was like, well, how, well, how do I grow without falling, right? It's like obedience, you know, and, and, and it's true. You know, you, you're obedient, you know, you go through those trials and you trust God and you grow because you see God coming through and it makes you stronger. And um, But with this obedience, like, that's a beautiful thing because it's not a beautiful thing to be disobedient. But when you do, when you are disobedient, the beautiful thing is that God will still teach you through that, can still use you and, you know, and, and he won't leave you there. And I, I, I was so afraid, like, for even for you to know that I drank. I just wanted him to know, you know, but to be honest, like, it, people think we're perfect or whatever but we're we're just like a sick person you need a doc if you if you're sick you need a doctor you don't go to the doctor when you're feeling good you know and, and us as you know we all struggle like we all need god and this is why we're here because we're not perfect we don't have it all together we're not perfect and this is the reason why we're here because if we weren't here we'd be all jacked up we'd still be in addiction you know we wouldn't have anybody to uplift us or give us counseling anybody to mentor us you know guide us through this uh, walk with god and you know, and, and, um, yeah. And, you know, Julio, like, sometimes we, we also don't realize that, yeah, we're getting attacked by the enemy, but sometimes we miss that God's bringing testing in our lives. You know, sometimes, sometimes God will see that there's something in us that we're not seeing and he's going to bring tests in our lives. And sometimes, you know, in the book of Job, I always say that God allowed testing to happen so you could get stronger and you could see where you're failing. And he'll allow uh, he'll allow us to fall, but he's so merciful and so graceful that he's gonna pick us back up. And I'm like, okay, hey, you did this. I'm gonna give you the strength for it. Now keep walking. And that's what. He, and you said it. There was more trials after that, but not. But God gave you that 
weapon he gave you that strength to like hey all right cut it out because you know why because you know also like the enemy's not gonna come to us with the full chain and be like hey let me wrap you up you know like let me chain you up if, if that was the case everybody would believe in jesus everybody would be a christian but instead instead he comes with a little a little like piece of chain i'm like hey hold this for me he gives us a choice and then when we say yes to him we're just connecting ourselves to the chain without even realizing it you know and i think oscar like you too bro like i think talking to you also man like don't get like i'll be honest bro i think when we first started this podcast the first two seasons like i remember you would question me about everything and like a part of me got argumentative you know like what like why like why are you like questioning me like what am i doing you know and that something happened bro like where i'm like i was wrong i'm like dude I'm, i was still a spiritual infant <laughs> you know and for you to like come and like hey why this like like it has opened my eyes brother like you've opened my eyes in a way where i don't think i would have opened them anywhere else because you've allowed me to really dig deep into the heart of god and really truly ask myself why am i doing this why am i asking this how like you know like you're so i like i genuinely love you like the way julio does bro uh, yeah I, now i love him more no no but you know i think no thank you for sharing that with us julio you know because we know you know it's uh, it's sad it sucks to say but there's a lot of men hiding Be there's a lot of people hiding in our church um who are scared to come forward i'm like hey i messed up hey i did this and for the exact same reason because they don't want their leaders they don't want to let people down and i want to tell you guys if you, whoever's watching this if you've fallen like we're still going to love you there's you know something that george always like george told me when i fell he was like i'm not going to love you any less and god's not going to love you any less sure we'll take the rebuke but i'd rather take the rebuke get back up and keep walking because we're testimonies at the end of the day like oscar says it we're one of god's greatest weapons against the enemy and, and you know and pastor p always says that he's going to attack those that don't He's not going to attack people that don't have purpose. He's not going to attack those lukewarm the Christians. He's going to attack those who have purpose, who are fighting for freedom, you know? But I, I just, like, it's okay if you fall, but it's not okay to stay on the ground. That's that's what it is. It's okay to have temptations. It's okay to do this and that. But if you enjoy it more than you enjoy God, then that's that becomes an issue. If, if you are de being deceiving, meaning, hey, yeah, I'm going to go to cell group. I'm going to come to church. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to hit the bar. But Thursday, Friday, Sunday, I'll be good. God, I'm like, no, nah, like God ain't going to play that with you, you know, and God might not punish you at that moment. But see your fruit. Ask yourself why you're, you're not getting disciples, why you're not winning souls. Ask yourself why God's not giving you that girlfriend. Ask yourself why your family is struggling. You know, ask yourself, are you reaping what you're sowing, you know? You know, uh, can I just add something real quick? Um, one thing that I I've learned is to listen to advice and like like how you said that he would question you, right? Um, he's questioned me with certain things too, and m many times I was like, okay, like what's wrong with this? Like how come I have to do this? How come? Blah blah blah. Right? He knows what he probably knows what things I'm. You know, we've talked about, but one thing I've learned. If someone's gonna give, is giving you advice or telling you to do things different, even though they seem right in your eyes, and you feel like that person doesn't understand, you gotta pay attention who's giving you the advice. You know what I mean? It's like if my homies are giving me advice, uh, I don't, you know, I don't think I should listen. But if it's a man like him, who ha you know his, you know, I I see how how uh, his. Yeah, like his the you know his family, his kids, um, his life, you know his lifestyle, like the way he lives, like the his um his fruit, you know what I mean? You see the fruit, and there's things that he tells me not to do, and I don't get why. But I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna shut up and listen and do it. You know what I mean? And 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 there's a few things that I that I've changed in my life. I don't know if he notices or not, but I'm like, I don't get it. But I'm just gonna be obedient. I see your life, I see the way, you, uh, the fruit in your in your household. I want that for my household. You know what I mean? And I've learned to just, you know, I'm just gonna take that advice because I see his life. You know, um, 
thank you guys you guys are gonna get 100 bucks each you know <laughs> for saying that nah just playing guys you guys you know i i think the, the that's the the fruit of discipleship you know like uh, um i think that the reason why you know i pour on you or i tell you something sometimes you know is mainly because i know that the next wave of people that you guys will reach is going to be much greater than anything that i've reached anything that we reach that's honestly our our pastor's vision for us that you guys that the next generation will impact so many more people than we could ever reach we're, we're getting old bro you know like our messages are getting are getting repetitive to some people you guys are gonna be i know a bigger weapon to 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 in god's hands and that's why you fight through the struggles you know that's why you go through the struggles too because you know we really if you can if you can honestly see what we see it, you know uh, when i look at your life also i look at a man who is just like the apostle paul you know like someone who was radical about drugs you know like <laughs> like the apostle paul was a, a radical for killing christians you were killing in your life and the life of whoever came your way with drugs and the enemy was using that with videos with filth with everything right in the hands of god man how many people will come to know god because of your willingness to give that's what i see when i see also i'm thinking like hey there's a few you know how to dribble there's a few things that if you were to do differently man that the impact that you will throw a punch and hell will be so much more impactful that's what i see i i see that i'm like this guy's punching but if he tilts his hand differently man this punch is gonna be so much greater you know at the right time you know at the right place you know and and that time is coming you know i could i could feel it it's coming you know where julio is is different like i see Man, you even in the field, even when you were in that field that you were, you were winning souls, dude. You know, like, like you, you won so many souls for God. You're a soul winner. Me and Karen were like, dude, if this guy just gets it together, he knows he's a soul winner. Like, this guy could have a whole church. You know, he he goes and and and, and shares the gospel with anyone who gets in front of him. You know, and I think, man, that time is coming where you're just gonna go and talk to people regardless of who's in front of you because you have the backing of god you have that test once you realize what you have man you're gonna have your cell group you're gonna fill that church we're not gonna be able to fill in my house you know even in that time that you were going through the struggle you want a couple for christ you know who they are go they used to come go to your to your high school and that entire family now is it's different and you were going through a struggle you know, like the God could use us even though we're not walking straight, you know, and, and now that you're walking straight, man, the impact you guys are going to make, it's unbelievable, you know, um, but it, it, this is all fruit of discipleship, you know, um, you know, we're going to we're going to wrap it up. But I want to I want to ask you guys one thing, you know, like I know this came out of a conversation, you know, that you guys had with each other that 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 i felt like man the truth the the word of god is is true the word the that it says that the truth shall set you free you were ashamed of this moment you know and you didn't want anyone to know but then you you know you confide in your brother in christ and that he encourages you you know and he lifted you up you know the, the ecclesiastics 4 9 says that two are better than one because if one may fall the other one could pick them up and that's what happened this beautiful moment between you guys you know they'd understand what it's like to be an, an addict you know but we also would un understand the grace of god you know what word of encouragement will you give to also what word of encouragement will you give to julio and we'll finish it off with with that and then it, what word of encouragement will you give someone who's watching the needs um the same god that you've experienced you know honestly like i i think it even though it's hard and it's sometimes you you know it feels shameful like it, it's very important to put uh put it into the light because sometimes we feel like we're the only ones i felt like i was the only one you know and right now he's sharing i didn't even know this you had you relapsed like four times i didn't know that you know and that helps me because i'm like dang i'm not alone like we all do struggle and i don't know what happens in our minds that we think that other people don't struggle and that we're the only ones 
you know, and then we're at church and we see people worshiping and everything. And we're like, damn, they must not be struggling, you know, but they're struggling too, you know, in, in certain ways. And, and I, I just, I would, you know, encourage you to, you know, whatever struggle you have, you know, speak to your leader. If you don't have a, a leader or, or if you don't even come to church, you know, like we're, we're here to help, you know what I mean? And, um, it, when you bring things to the light, it, it, it really, it really sets you free because you're, you're, you're keeping that darkness within you and you're not getting any help. You know, you're not, you're not letting the word of God transform you. And, and when, and you're not the only one, you know, you're, you're not the only one. And there, and there's probably people at the, uh, you know, in church struggling with something and, and, you know, keeping it inside is, is, is not going to help in any way. And, and I can definitely say that that day that I spoke to also, and when I spoke to Oscar, like it, it, it definitely, like it just, it gets this weight off of you, you know? And if you keep it in the darkness, you're, you're not going to grow and there's not going to be any fruit, you know, you, who, who's going to guide you through something they don't know you're going through. There's no way you, you don't seek the help. Nobody's going to help you. And, you know, don't leave it in the darkness and, you know, put it in the light. And, you know, before I give advice to people, I just want to encourage you, Julio, you know, like, Keep going, bro. You know, like there was this old football saying, you know, like we used to fight in the trenches, you know, um, the same thing with the spiritual warfare. You know, we're in the trenches, you know, and if you fall, I'm going to be right there picking you up because Oscar needs you. I need you. And the rest of the guys at our church need you because because you have that strength. You have a different strength that we don't have. And you're going to lead us into battle. So if you fall, we're going to be the right to pick you up. And that goes for any man who's struggling in that church. If you fall. Hey, don't be ashamed. Come to us. We're going to pick you up and we're going to find ways to hit back the enemy because we're we're not going to run away. We're not going to run the opposite direction. We're going to take the fight to the enemy. And, you know, for those who are struggling, for those who feel like they, they're never going to change, hey, breathe, relax, you know, like silence the voice of the enemy and focus your attention to the voice of God. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, you're not going to face trials. You're not going to face temptations. You're not going to face all these things. Like, no, like I'd be lying. If I say things are going to be easy, they're not, but you know what? God's so good because God is always there. Literally extending his arm out for you. And just, just hang on, you know, just keep going. Just acknowledge things. You're going to change, you know, like come as you are to God, but you're not going to leave who you are, you know? And, things and the enemy knows he's attacking he, the enemy's attacking you because you have purpose the enemy's attacking you because he knows that as soon as you give your life to christ you're going to change generations you're going to take thousands of people away from his kingdom and put them into the heaven into the, ki the kingdom of heaven so that's why you're being attacked but realize that god's calling you because you're the one that's going to change your family and your generations you're going to bring thousands of people to the, the feet of christ so hang on in there you know get connected you know reach out bring the darkness to the light you know god's your light you know he's a lamp to your he's the light to your lamp you know the lamp to your light or however you say it, the light to your feet you know but just hang on you know um you're not alone and you know like we're here together awesome well th thank you guys thank you also thank you uh julio uh and thank god for the conversation that 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 appointed time that you guys had you know for encouraging each other that's what we need at church you know men that will lift themselves up you know who who um who share the same struggles together you know i know there's many men out there who are if you're struggling with this something like this and it's in the dark like julio and also said bring it to the light there's men who will help you um take it to jesus and with jesus you know um every situation is blessed you know and and i, I thank you julio thank you also uh we're gonna continue to uh walk this journey together and um know that god is gonna bless and and use it Uh, to bring many more people to him, to, to him. So thank you guys. We'll see you again. Uh, thank you guys. We'll see you in the next episode.